Hello students of statics, this is Dr. Dan Baker, and today's video is going to pick up on our topic of 3D equilibrium, and we're going to run through an example of this hand winch, okay, just so we kind of orient ourselves to the problem. We have a designated axis system, X is going to lie upon the full length of this winch. We have two different bearings that essentially are supporting the rod coming through the middle and this drum. Okay, so the rod, the handle, and the drum could all rotate. The bearings are keeping it held in place. And A is a journal bearing. Okay, remember a journal bearing is a free um, axle bearing, essentially not allowing or not providing any reaction, any force support along its, the length of the axle. B over here is a thrust bearing, and so we can have both a force along X in addition to forces and couples along the Y and Z axes. There's 180 pounds, which hangs vertically downwards, okay, so that'll be in the negative Y direction, off the edge of this 8-inch radius drum, okay, so from the middle out to the edge is eight inches. And then off this far end over here, we have an 18 inch handle. Now this handle is currently sitting 60 degrees below the X, Z plane. And the handle itself, so this part of the handle is perpendicular to the arm, which basically as you swing this handle around, it will, it will swing around an arc that's parallel to the Y, Z plane. Okay, so perpendicular fundamentally to the X axis. Um, so it's 60 degrees, once again, it's kind of rotated down below the X, Z plane. And we know that this system is static and we want to find the force of this force P to keep the overall system in equilibrium. But as we add a force to P, we're also gonna pick up some reactions at A and B. Okay, so we're gonna go through this kind of step by step and talk through all the details. So to start with, we always start with a free body diagram. So let's go ahead and sketch that out. I'm just going to sketch kind of the rotating part. Okay, we'll go here. So the drum, the handle, It looks something like that. Just tried to draw, like I said, the um, the part that would rotate, the part that I'm going to treat as one single rigid body. And so we do need an axis system. And since I already was given an axis system, let me just bring it along for the ride. So there's my y axis. Here is my z axis. And coming all the way through, not the far end, is my x axis. Okay, so we know that with either one of these bearings, we end up with forces perpendicular to the axle. Okay, so one of those forces would be AY, and the other one here, AZ. Now, I'm not going to add the couples yet. I'm going to talk through those before I think about adding those couples onto my free body diagram. So perpendicular forces again, BY, BZ. And BX, the applied forces, here's P sub Y, the vertical force, here is the vertical force downward, 180 pounds. All right, so reviewing our notes on three-dimensional equilibrium, three-dimensional equilibrium notes mentioned that if there are two, two or more, of these reactions, we call them multi-component reactions, okay? So essentially any two bearings, any two hinges, any two um, fixed supports, um, anything that basically provides forces in addition to couples and multiple of them, that it's not likely that we're gonna engage the couples, okay? So let's think about the couples over here on A. There's two couples available, one around the y-axis, one around the z-axis. Keep in mind that around the y-axis, you could put your thumb along the positive y-axis, and that basically tells you that that couple resistance is trying to prevent this body from rotating around the y-axis. And so as we think about the forces that'll pick up instead of that, right, if you summed your moments around the y-axis going through A, see if you can figure out which of the forces down here at B would engage first before you needed this, we'll call this um, our couple, 
around the y-axis at point A. Okay, so which of the forces at B would engage before this couple, this resistance to rotation on the y-axis was necessary? See if you can answer that before I tell you the answer. It turns out that the force will engage preventing rotation on the y-axis is BZ. Fundamentally, BZ and AZ would form a force couple before you'd need the concentrated angular resistance, right? The resistance rotation from this moment couple. So this couple goes to zero, basically. And we'll put a little note here that we'll put not engaged. And it's going to be the same thing for my couple around the x-axis at A. Also, the couple around the y-axis at point B and the couple around the z-axis at point B. Okay, so there's four couples which are all not engaged. Okay, so on your free body diagram, as you think forward to quizzes and exams and things like that, either draw all of them and cross them out or add a little note just like this to say, hey, these are available, but I guess let me add that available. But not engaged, okay, those four couples. All right, so that gets us to our free body diagram. Another thing we talked about is number of unknowns. One, two, three, four, five, six. Excellent, we like six unknowns. Let's go ahead and solve for all six of those. All right, so thinking about strategy in a problem like this, it doesn't matter where we sum forces. We're going to have the exact same equations. So let's go ahead and start with that. So I'm just going to do, write my equation separately instead of running out a beast of a big equation in the for all directions and then separating it. Let's just go ahead and isolate from the start. So some of the forces in the x equals 0. The only force we have in the x direction is bx. So bx equals zero. Well, that was easy. That was one of our unknowns. Next up, let's go ahead in the y direction. Sum of forces in the y direction. This is equal to zero. Um, now, there's multiple forces in the y direction. We have a y plus by. I, I drew both of those in an assumed positive direction, so I write those with positive values. 180 is going downwards, so that's going to be minus 180 plus p sub y, and this equals zero. Okay, we can't quite solve that out, right? We have three unknowns existing there. And then some of the forces in the z direction, only a couple forces in the z, we have a sub z plus b sub z is equal to zero. Now, from this equation, while one of the answers certainly for a sub z and b sub z would tell us that they're both zero, there also are other answers, right? Because any equal and opposite values for a z and b z would give us a value which is, you know, if we add them together, give us a value equal to zero, okay? So don't look at this equation and say, oh, it must be zero. It might be zero, but we don't know that yet. Okay. We do have three equations remaining, which those three equations are related to our moments. And so as we think about where we want to, or what do we want to do with our moments, right? Remember our two options are either really to sum moments around each of the axes, which to be honest, this problem probably wouldn't be too bad to do that. But let's go ahead and go through the robust tool, which is um, summing all moments around one single point. And so I'm going to pick point A for my point. I'm going to sum my moments around. And so I'm going to go through a two-step process. One of those is going to be to find all my position vectors from A. And then I'm going to write out all my forces as components because basically I'm going to need to cross my R cross F of every single force that's not going through point A. Okay, I'm going to use the top right of the screen since I have a little bit of space up here. So R, A, C. Let me add a little point C right here saying, hey, let's call that point C with 180 pounds is dropping down. That is equal to a distance of 12 along the X, no change in the Y, so that's zero, and a positive eight, which is the radius in the Z. That's in inches. 
Next up, we have R, A, B. Now, these are vectors. So coming straight down the line, it's going to be a total distance of 36 in the x direction. So 36, no change in the y, no change in the z, also in inches. And then the last position vector we need is all the way to p. So r, a, p. And this one, pretty straightforward in the x, that's going to be 46. Now, as we think about finding the values here, Let's go ahead and draw a quick little triangle, right? So we have an 18 inch hypotenuse. We have a known angle. Let's see, that's from here down to here. So that's gonna translate over to this angle. Okay, so that's 60. And so we can think really that RAP, we're going to have a Z component here and a negative Y component here. Okay, so essentially using the sine and the cosine of 60 times that hypotenuse of 18 inches gives me the following values. I have that negative y ends up being 15.6. So it'd be like the sine of 60 times 18. And in the x direction, of course, the cosine of 60 is a half. And so that times 18 is nine. Okay, so there are my three position vectors. Uh, you probably don't need to move these. I'm just going to move them for um, just to give myself a little more space there. Okay, so there's my position vectors. And then the force vectors are fairly well specified. I think I'll just go ahead and list those in my cross products as I work through those because we really have fairly simple force vectors at A, at C, at B, and at P, right? Okay, so we are going to sum all moments. About A. All right, so as I set this up, I tend to set it up with determinants since we're doing a three dimensional moments. So sum of all moments at A. And I'm gonna do a separate determinant for each and every force. Now, if you had forces that are concurrent going through one single point, so I guess in that context, like at point B, I'm going to combine BX, BY, and BZ into one determinant, um, but the other two points will have their own determinants. Okay, so first let's look at a determinant for the 180 pound force. I hat, J hat, and K hat. My R vector told me a value of 12, 0, 8, and the force vector is 0, negative 180, and 0. Okay, next determinant. And this determinant will focus on the, what's going on at B. So we have 36, 0, 0, uh, BX, BY, and BZ. And then the last term we have is going to be the last determinant. So again, I hat, J hat, K hat, my R vector values, 46, negative 15.6 and nine. And then the force vector here was going assumed upwards. So zero, P sub Y and zero. Okay, so three different determinants for my moments at those three different locations. Now, again, instead of writing a giant moment equation, right, which I could write combining all these together, I actually like to take a look at this and essentially do my combinations as I'm moving through the problem. Okay, so I'm gonna look at my I hat terms first. And so if I look at my I hat terms, where fundamentally this is summing moment around the X axes, because point A also turned out to be the origin point. And so if I take a look at my first um, cross product square, I have eight times negative 180. This is on a negative slant. And so I have the minus eight times negative 180. And so those negatives will cancel. Looking at my next one, I don't have anything coming out of the I hat, my next determinant. In the final one over here, I have another negative slant here, nine times PY. And so minus nine times PY, this equals zero. Do not forget to write your equal zero. I see quite a few students doing that. 
um, it, it is fundamentally part of the equation. Okay, so this this equation does not equal some random number. Um, so fundamentally, just to remind ourselves, the sum of moment in x is everything I wrote over here, right? And we know that sum of moment in the x has to equal zero. And so whether you want to write it on a separate line, so here's another way you could do it: is you could put sum of moments about the x equals zero, and then right below that, start adding your terms, right? Either way, but just make sure you have an equal zero in there. And so the J hat equation, going through the same analysis. And so again, J hat. Keeping in mind, if you use the um, kind of the cross multiplying, that you have to throw in a negative value or a negative sign for your J hat. So the other way you can think about it is that you're down into the right slants or the negative slants, and then back to the left slants are positive, but in some way bring in that negative value. So some of moments in the y direction. Let's see, I have no non-zero values in the first one. Ooh, I have a 36 times bz. This is going to be minus 36 times bz, because it's the negative slant for j. And the last one here, nothing coming out of that one. All right, once again, equal zero. And then in my k hat, summing moments about the z axes, um, this equals in the first one, I have a positive 12 times negative 180. For the second one, let's keep it visible there, I have a positive 36 times by. And for the last one, I have 46 times PY. Okay, so there's all my different values coming out of these three determinants about the x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis. Once again, you can write out the overall equation with all your i-hats, j-hats, k-hats, and then collect them. But as like I said, I think this is a little bit more efficient working through it. So looking at these and figuring out what I can do now algebraically, I can see from my sum of moment about the y-axis, 36 times bz was equal zero. There's no option but for bz to equal zero. So once we know that bz equals zero, we'll bounce around here a little bit. Then we can come back up here. And if bz went to zero, then here now confirms that az is equal to zero. Right, but it wasn't until we could validate one of them was zero that the other one has to be zero as well. So there's three of our answers. Out of the top equation here, we can solve for PY, noting that we will cancel those, and so bringing nine PY over to the other side, and we find out that P is equal to 160 pounds. And then bringing down the values of PY to solve for BY, we can find that BY is equal to negative 144.4 pounds. All right, let's see here. One, two, three, four. Oh, one more to go. Bring up PY and BY, we can solve that AY is equal to 164.4 pounds. Okay, so that gives me my six different unknown terms across those six different equations. So just in a quick review, we created a free body diagram. We analyzed the overall motion. We got to understand what direction things were going in. We took a look at, on our free body diagram, there was a journal bearing and a thrust bearing. Okay, so two different multi-component supports. And it turned out for those multi-component supports that the couples would not be engaged because fundamentally the forces would engage first. Really was, what happened here is that the forces in the z direction engage before the couples in the y direction, and then it'd be the forces in the y direction that engage before the couples in the z direction. Okay, And so we were able to eliminate those couples, get us down to six unknowns in our free body diagram. That's the golden number for a 3D problem. We then summed all of our forces. It doesn't matter what point that's about. It's all the same values. And then we summed our moments as three separate determinants, one determinant for essentially each point on the system where we had forces coming through and work through those determinants, making sure it 
keeping a really good eye on signs in my cross products and then use my algebra to solve for all my unknowns. I hope that was a useful example and you can see the process for solving these 3D equilibrium problems. They are a bit long, but I have confidence that you can work out your process to make as few errors as possible as you're working through it. Have confidence in yourself. Uh, I believe in you as well and hope you're having a great day.